الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Recently we spoke about um, the aspect of Tazkiyah and how it has been proven through Quran and Hadith in the light of Quran and Hadith. Uh, we had touched upon that and today I would uh, elaborate a little further in regards to that as well insha'Allah and uh, to kind of further analyze upon the aspect of purification of the self, purification of the heart in the light of Quran and Hadith. So the Prophet وسلم, and we spoke about the different aspects of Tazkiyah and Bay'ah that how there's different different categories of Bay'ah when a person goes and gives Bay'ah and at, time, at the time of Rasulullah وسلم, there were different categories in regards to that um, but the one that I'm going to touch upon today is the Bay'ah upon uh, when a person he uh, promises an individual because bay'ah technically means a promise, an ahad, right? Um, and when a person promises another individual that he is going to be steadfast, he is going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, practice all of the umur, all of the commandments in Islam and in the Sharia by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the footprints of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is known as al bay'atu ala a'mal al Islam, and hence why. Uh, Shaheed al-Islam, Hazrat Mulana Yusuf Dhanmi rahmatullah alayhi has written in uh, Hayat al-Sahaba as well. There's a specific chapter uh, which talks about al-bay'atu ala a'mal al-Islam, which means the bay'ah, the promise upon practicing the actions of Islam, right? The actions and the different different aspects of Islam and the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a separate category that he has written Shaykh al-Islam wa Nabi Yusuf al-Hanmi rahmatullah alayhi in Hayat al-Sahaba and there's the other aspects of bay'ah as well which is bay'ah al-Jihad and bay'ah al-Islam etc. In there there's a hadith where um, there's a Sahabi with the name of Bashir radiyallahu anhu and Bashir radiyallahu anhu he once comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that O Prophet of Allah upon which aspects of Islam or upon what aspects of deen uh, do you want me to give bay'ah to you? Upon what aspect? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he spread out his hands and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him that you make a bay'ah, you make a promise that you are going to follow these commandments. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said first, number one, is that you are not, never going to associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that I am the servant of Allah ta'ala and his Prophet and then after that, the Prophet ﷺ said, you're also going to practice zakat, you're going to go for hajj, you're going to go out in the path of Allah Ta'ala, strive in the path of Allah Ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ listed those categories. So Bashir anhu at the end, he said to the Prophet ﷺ, that Ya Nabi Allah, I'm, I can do everything else except two things that you have mentioned. Two things that you have mentioned, I can do everything else besides those two things. And the Prophet ﷺ said, what are those two things? He said, Ya Nabi Allah, number one, I cannot give zakat because I only have ten camels. And those ten camels that I have, they are used for my family for ride as a means of transportation and also as a means of getting milk from them and provision from them, number one. So Ya Nabi Allah, I cannot give zakat. And then the second thing is, Ya Nabi Allah, I cannot strive in the path of Allah. I cannot go out for jihad. Because I feel that I am, if I may go in the path of Allah, I may flee from the battlefield. I may run away from the battlefield. So because of that, Allah Ta'ala may get angry at me. So these two things I cannot promise, but everything else I can guarantee. Every, upon everything else I can guarantee that I'm going to obey and I'm going to listen to you, Ya Nabi Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, O Bashir, if you are not going to give zakat and you're not going to strive in the path of Allah, then how will you, end, uh, how will you earn Jannah? How will you earn the paradise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So then he said, Ya Nabi Allah, okay, spread out your hands and I'm going to give bay'ah to you that I'm going to do those two things as well. And then he gave bay'ah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So again, proving the fact that the Sahaba radiallahu anhu from time to time, Thawban radiallahu anhu also goes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Thawban radiallahu anhu says, Ya Nabi Allah, upon what aspects do I give bay'ah to you? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lists those categories. And Thawban radiallahu anhu, he said, I'm going to give bay'ah to Ya Nabi Allah. So these are the ahadith in the light of those ahadith that we see that the Sahaba radiallahu anhu not just coming to the fold of Islam and leaving, that's it, that my job is done, 
right? No, we have to take it in a step forward. And that is, you look for a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You look for a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can make you reach those ranks that you're looking for. Right? In this day and age, everything and any position that you are looking for, you need a mentor, you need a teacher, you need somebody that can take you there. So for this as well, you need a mentor, you need a teacher. You need someone who is already connected spiritually to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can direct you there. And I'm going to end off with this thing inshallah. In the Quran we find that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people of Iman, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people of faith, there are two types of friends of Allah ta'ala. Two types of friends. There is a wilaya, there is a wali who is am, a general, and that is known as wilaya to amma. Right? Wilaya to amma means a general wilaya, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala technically means that a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that's a general friend. And that Allah ta'ala says in the Quran, Allahu waliyu alladhina amanu yukhrijuhum min al zulumati ilan nur. Right? Allah ta'ala, He is the wali, He is the friend of those people who bring iman, who have iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is general. That wilaya is general. It's for everybody. So anybody who is a mu'min, who has iman, Allah is their friend. But we're not satisfied with that. Because there's another category, category in the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. And Allah ta'ala specifies, and Allah ta'ala says that those wa'awliya are the khas ones, are the specific ones, are the chosen ones. And now we want to be in that category after we bring iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which was known as wilayatul khasa. Right? A friend who is your close friend. Not just any friend, not just general friend. A friend who is very close to you. And that is the friendship we want with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu waliyul muttaqeen. Right? Allah ta'ala, He is the wali. He is the friend of those who have fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we get, gain that wilayatul khasa? Is by following the footprints and getting those teachings from those individuals who are already the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are already the close, close friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we cannot get there by ourselves we have to be amongst those muttaqeen we have to be amongst those people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for us to reach those ranks in order for us to get those ranks and I had mentioned in our last session as well that when we ask Allah ta'ala for a dua in Surah Al-Fatiha what do we say? Salat al an'amta alayhim Ya Allah, guide me to the path of those whom you've bestowed your favors upon. Min al nabiyyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin. Right? From the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Take me to that path. Anbiya are not here. Siddiqin, they're not here. Shuhada, no. Salihin are the only categories here that we can actually hold on to and they can guide us and take us to that level we are searching for and become the khas awliya, the khas, the, speci the, the, the special servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are the muttaqeen. And that's why when Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sending him towards Yemen and the very, very last advices of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, when he was sending him towards Yemen, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's walking with him and Mu'adh radiallahu anhu is on his, he's on his, uh, he's on his camel and the Prophet ﷺ looks at him and he tells him, Oh Mu'adh. And Mu'adh radiallahu anhu was very young. He wasn't an old Sahabi. He was a very young Sahabi. But the Prophet ﷺ taught him so much where he, when he sent him to Yemen, the Prophet ﷺ gave him the entire Yemen to take care of. Right? That Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, at a young age, he's taking care of a whole city. He's taking care of a whole area by himself. Right? And that was what? Because of that suhbah that we just heard about. Because of that companionship. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now when he's sending him towards Yemen, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his final advice is what? Asa Allah talqani ba'd aami hadha, la'allaka anta murru bin masjidi hadha wa bi qabri. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looks at him, the hadith of Mishkat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looks at him and he says, Oh Mu'adh, when you come back, you may not find me. You may find my grave. You may find my house, but you won't find me, O Mu'adh. Mu'adh radiallahu anhu starts weeping and crying. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says what? Oh Mu'adh, don't cry, don't weep. Because this dunya is temporary. We're going to depart from here. We're going to leave from here. This dunya is only 50, 60 years. But the main goal is that you are with me in the Akhirah. And how can you be with me in the Akhirah, O Mu'adh? He's the Prophet ﷺ said one thing. Inna awla nasi bi al muttaqun man kanu wa haythu kanu. Inna awla nasi bi al muttaqun. The people closest to me on the day of Qiyamah would be who? Muttaqeen. That same wilaya that we're trying to achieve, that same friendship that we all want to gain, be muttaqeen, 
be in that category, the Prophet Sallallahu says, the closest to me on the day of Qiyamah will be the Muttaqeen. Man kanu wa haythu kanu. It doesn't matter who they are, where they live, does not matter. They will be with me on the day of Qiyamah. So that wilayah we are searching for, and for that, we need these awliya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, these friends of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, so that they can guide us there, they can take us there. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us all the ability to purify ourselves, to rectify ourselves, to cleanse our heart, and to follow these footprints of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and follow these awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that they guide us there. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen.